Today we're here to discuss how to take your weekly bacteria test. That's also called a heterotrophic plate count, which is also referred to frequently as total bacteria. The device you're going to use to take this test is a dip slide. It's got a little coating of an agar material that will actually let the bacteria grow on it so you'll see spots appear. And you'll incubate this for a couple of days after you sample it. We'll talk about how to take the sample in just a moment. Just to let you know, based on your result from this test, you may have to add additional biocides, or usually if you don't have a 7G license, certified pesticide applicators license, you call your contractor to add additional biocide. You might have to change biocides, improve your uh, yeah, biocide program, or you may even have to do a disinfection and cleaning of your cooling tower based on the result. Okay, but keep in mind that this is a good way to understand how much bacteria you have growing in the cooling tower, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you have Legionella growing in the cooling tower. Legionella is a specific kind of bacteria. It may be related to total bacteria, or it may not be related to total bacteria counts. We're not really sure yet. There's not enough research on that. But the city requires that you do this test weekly to determine whether you have good microbiological control in general, not necessarily Legionella, but in general in your cooling tower and we'll discuss how to take this test. So your weekly biocide control test, your HPC, total bacteria test that you're going to be taking, consists of two basic parts. The slide with a little container that it's contained in, paddle basically with a growth media embedded on it, and a chart that you're going to use to compare the amount of growth that occurs on your slide after two days. So you need both the slide itself, the actual test device, and you're going to need that chart to refer to so you know actually how much bacteria is growing in your system. So to start with, read the instructions on your chart. It'll step you through how to use this device. In general, the way that these devices are used, and remember your specific device, your specific manufacturer might be a little bit different than the way I'm describing it, so it's important you read this anyway. But in general, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be taking your brand new slide, make sure that it's not out of date, they have a date marking on an expiration date, make sure it's not out of date. You're going to open the container, you're going to take that device out, that little dip slide out, you're going to make sure not to touch or uh, with your fingers or any other surface that agar material or that bacterial growth material that's on there, and you're going to take that and you're going to immerse it in your cooling tower sample. You might be actually doing that at your cooling tower sump, or you might be taking a sample from a pipe or from a pump or something like that, wherever your designated sample point is for your condenser water system, for your cooling tower. That should be marked and determined by your uh, plan. Okay, so you take your dip slide, you immerse it completely in the water from your systems, move it around for about three, four seconds, take it out and shake it off, let it drip off, drift off, and then replace it back into the container, just like that. Okay, so now we need to incubate this device for, in this case of this particular dip slide, 48 hours at a temperature between 25 and 36 degrees centigrade. You can just pick out a temperature in the middle there around 30 or 31 degrees centigrade. That's a little bit warmer than room temperature. Okay, so we need, a, we need somewhere where we know we can reliably maintain that temperature for the 48 hour period that we have to grow that in. And the way that we do that is we use a device called an incubator. And I'm going to turn the power on to this one, it'll make a little bit of noise. And as I turn the power on it, you'll see it light up. And you'll be able to calibrate it and tell it that the temperature you want to maintain is at 32, 33, in this case I want 31 degrees because our particular slides will work at that temperature, that's the middle of the range for that uh, particular device. When it eventually gets to 31 degrees, it'll be set up. You'll run this all the time so you won't have to do it uh, each time as I'm doing it here. Okay, you'll open the door, find a secure place for it to be stored, close it, and leave it there for the next two days, for the next 48 hours. Record when you put it in there, record when you get it out, and we'll be talking about how to read the device itself. 
If you want, after a day or so, you can take a peek in there and see if there's any growth on it or if the growth is very bad or very high. You can also maybe start to think about how you're going to correct that. Okay, so now how do we interpret those slides? Well, this chart gives us a description of the level of bacteria that we have on a chart based on the number of dots and the, how big the dots are that appear on that slide. As this is exposed to bacteria, some of them settle out on the surface of this and start to grow. Each one of those bacteria that actually starts to grow on here is called a colony forming unit. So we're looking at colony forming units of what that represents. So on this chart, you can have anywhere from basically zero up to over a million colony forming units. And based on how much of the bacteria is present, after 48 hours, your particular slide may look somewhere in the range of these, the, uh, these, call it these uh, uh, patterns right here. Okay, so down at this end of it, we can see there's not very many colony forming units on these. Now this is identified as it represents the total amount that's in a, uh, a different volume of water and represents a large number of bacteria. So this is less than a thousand colony forming units, a thousand colony forming units, or ten thousand colony forming units. If you go beyond that, you have a hundred thousand, a million, and ten million colony forming units rep uh, represented here. You will never get a slide that looks exactly like any one of these. So you're always going to get slides that are somewhere in between these, and they take a little bit of judgment to decide where you are with these. So the city wants you to keep under 10,000 colony forming units of bacteria in your cooling tower. Okay, so if I take a slide, I hold it up against here, and I'm trying to determine what I have, well, your judgment is going to have to be, am I more than this level? Am I between this level and this level, this level and this level, or am I between some of the other levels? Okay, so the way I would report this as is between 1,000 and 10,000, or just simply report it as under 10,000 since you don't have to take any actions if you're under 10,000. So let's take a look at what some of these may look like. Now, for instance, this slide looks like it's probably down here around 1,000, right? And I would say roughly that this side represents somewhere between 1,000 and 10,000. So just maybe a little over 1,000. So that's satisfactory. That's not a problem. Okay, let's take another one of these. Okay, here's another one. Okay, now this one, I see a bunch of smaller spots on it, but it looks like there's more, more surface area. There's more spots on there. So this one looks like it could start to be over 10,000. If you have a, uh, if you have something that looks like this or lower, I would report it under 10,000. This or higher, I would start to consider that over 10,000. Well, how about if we get a bit higher? Well, once we get to 10,000, we have to take the uh, take our program, our biocide program, and respond to that. And typically, that consists of maybe an extra biocide dose and checking the level again in a week. If you get higher than that, for instance, if we get higher than 100,000, then we have to take an additional step of reevaluating the biocide program and seeing if we re really need to do more than that. Okay, so let's see what that might look like. So, for instance, this looks like it's under that level. It's under 100,000, between 10,000 and 100,000. So just like it's simply uh, extra biocide dose would respond to that adequately. And then retesting a week later. Well, how about this level? Well, this level, to me, appears to be just a little under 100,000. So similar to the last slide, I would probably react the same way. Even though this, this apparently has more, it looks like it doesn't quite reach the level of this particular slide. Okay, then I would go to the next one. Let's see how much this one has. Well, this one has quite a bit of growth in it, right? So to me, that looks like it's very close to a million maybe just under a million. Between 100,000 and a million, most likely you would have to not only uh, um, uh, uh, do an extra biocide dose, but your water treatment program should reevaluate your biocide program, perhaps recommend the cleaning, maybe do some other things that you need to control this a little bit more carefully. Okay, well, if we get even beyond that, for instance, this slide looks like it's at least a million and perhaps higher than a million. 
When you get over higher than a million, within 24 to 48 hours, you need to dose the tower with biocide, and you need to perform a cleaning, hyperhalogenate, in other words, add chlorine for a period of time, and clean the cooling tower as well. So a million requires an extra response, okay, once you get above that. So a little bit of this is a judgment thing, okay, but compare it and judge which of these is it between. And once you get over 10,000, you require a response. There are no fines for getting a certain amount of bacteria in your cooling tower. There are fines for not responding to the level that you have and, and doing what the city requires that you need to do in order to correct it. Okay, so you can get, uh, get 10,000 one week, respond to it, a million another week, properly respond to it, 100,000 a few weeks down the road, respond to it. As long as you respond to it properly, you're not going to be fined. What you will be fined for is getting a high level over 10,000 and not responding to it properly. Okay, so that's basically it. So when we come back in a few days, we'll read this and we'll know what we need to do with our cooling tower and our biocide program, if anything. Thank you.